All right, here we go. Salute to Knicks Nation on this Friday evening. Another edition of Knicks Post Game Live presented by BetUS, the official sports book of uh, Knicks Fan TV. Knicks head to Beantown as a consolation prize for getting smoked in the in season tournament quarterfinals by the Milwaukee Bucks. But the Boston Celtics also were coming off of a loss, and they were keen to avenge themselves with the return of the unicorn, Chris Stapps Porzingis, and that they would do by smacking the Knicks up from pillar to post. Derek White still going bananas on this Knicks team, and all in all, just a bum night by the Knicks, man. No defense whatsoever, and just could not get a stop. And Boston rolls, man. Steam rolls the Knicks. 133 to 123. Let's talk about it. Salute to everybody in the chat. Coming off a tough loss against the Bucks, I didn't see this one for them. I just didn't think that they were going to get up for this one. Boston at the top of the East. Tough opponent. Chris Stops comes in. What is the first thing he do? What is the first thing he does? He gets a a, uh, a a put back, lay in easy bucket, and then the next thing he does what he does best to the Knicks, which is expose him in the pick and pop. Mitchell Robinson in trouble early, and things would just cascade from there. Man, Derek White was an absolute two way menace. He was busting JB's ass the entire game. Uh, the Knicks could not get any stops, leaving three point shooters wide open. Rotation's not crisp. Not running guys off the three-point line. Not applying any pressure. I mean, Clyde talked about it all night. No pressure being applied on this Boston team until, like, the final, like, two minutes of the game. Like, you know, what are you guys really expecting to accomplish here? And it just felt like even the smallest of leads was insurmountable. It was just one of those nights. It was absolutely one of those nights. Uh, Drew Holiday chipped in. He was a defensive menace in the third quarter. It got really ugly for the Knicks in the third. And... You know, from a a Randall standpoint, you know, it's the tale of two Randalls. It's what he usually gives you, right? He had a brilliant game against the Bucks, uh, but the Celtics, much better defense. I thought the Celtics give them credit. I thought they did a good job of, of disguising their help defense and made them think a lot more tonight, right? Against the Bucks, you saw quick decisions, quick move, straight turn up into the paint attack the basket, and make a move from there against the Celtics. Got a little bit sluggish in the mud. Two on the ball. Made things a little bit tougher. Six turnovers for Julius. Uh, There's a few things I want to talk about. One, it comes down to when you play this team, the Knicks and the Celtics always play a tight game, CP. And the first thing I always have to talk about is the turnovers. I was on SNY today with Brandon London. Yeah, shout out. I got and, Brandon. Shout out to Brandon. And we were discussing... You know, we're previewing this game, and he asked me, what do the Knicks have to do tonight? The shooting has been on point. Even tonight, it was on point. The thing that it comes down between these two teams, man, is turnovers. And when you play the Celtics, especially this Celtics team, this is one of the best starting five in the NBA. When you look at the advanced stats, you cannot, and I repeat, you cannot have too many turnovers when you play this team. Yeah. As you saw towards the end of the second quarter, beginning of the third you have these boneheaded turnovers, and then you're just giving the Celtics a runway, especially in the third quarter. The third quarter is like when they started to really open up and take that commanding lead, and you just can't have turnovers against this team, man. They just they just, they just just thrive off of your mistakes. And the Knicks, that's what they were successful last season. They limited the turnovers. They were able to play essentially almost scotch-free basketball. You can't do that. They're not doing it as great as a job as he did last season, but you can't do that, especially against the Celtics team. Yeah. Next thing, you talk about watching this team toying with them. It was not necessarily the quick decision-making, but what they did tonight, CP, is that they, even on offense, knew how to move the ball and find the weak spot in their defense, yeah. right? We like The Knicks will love to protect the paint. The Knicks will always do, will try to double somebody if Tatum's out there or Brown's out there. And you kept seeing Al Horford open. You kept seeing somebody else. You saw Derek White open. All these guys were open for three, and they were putting up quick shots. It, ne it wasn't necessarily the same ball movement that we saw against the Bucks, where they're just whipping the ball all around the court, but it was precision. They're like, okay, we're going to draw it over here. We're going to get the double team, and then we're going to kick it all the way back around to the other side and yeah, find Derek ball, White. Ball He's going to be open all superb. the time, man. Yeah. All the time. And then you want to talk about just defensively, you know, Yes, Celtics thrive off the turnovers. 
defense tonight. I mean, shout out to Fred Cash for tweeting this out, and, and he and he's one hundred percent right. You know, when you have when you put Drew Holiday on a big, it looks like a mismatch, but it's not a mismatch. Yeah, it's a way for the Celtics to lull you in to making a mistake, and then because of that, what seems like a mismatch. Everyone else is tightly guarded because you have the wingspan, the height to make all the other passing lanes smaller. All those passing windows are smaller, and they took advantage of that time after time after time again, man. This team, look, you just see the talent disparity. You see the talent disparity, especially when Brunson and Randall are not fully there, right? Like they did they did their part. Like if you had the if you had the rest of the guys show up, it could have been a closer game. But when they're not like the most efficient as they can be. It is a slug fest between, especially between the Celtics and the Bucks. They're just not there, man. Like when you when you watch these yeah. games, they're just not there, especially offensively to keep up and defensively for teams that can shoot the three ball well. Protecting the paint is not the right decision in this case. We're not. We don't move the ball well enough to uh, get in a scoring matchup with the Boston Celtics. That's true. Shootout. We, we're, we don't move it. the ball well enough. That's true. And as much as I love Jalen Brunson, I'm okay with Brunson hogging the ball at times since he's such a great scorer. Yeah. Uh, but we, we do have two hogs that, that hogs the ball. Randall mm-hmm. hogs the ball. And when Randall does pass it, it's off target. When he throws the pass, a lot of times it's off ta- target, yeah. and it's not in the pocket. Yeah. So – I, you know, when Grimes says, I think it's better for the team, I think he's relieved because now he's going to get freedom. He, I mean, the second unit, although IQ does, I mean, one assist tonight, so it's not like IQ's passing the ball, but at least in the second unit, Grimes can get freedom, come off screens, handle the ball in the pick and roll to Mitch. At least Grimes can, can get more shots and feel better about himself. Yeah, I wouldn't want to play with Julius Randle at times, the yeah. way the ball sticks. I'm not going to say Randle doesn't move at all the times, but he's just too slow. With everything he does, he's too slow. Uh, nobody played defense. I'm not just saying it's it's just Randall, but I would not have brought Julius Randall back in that game. As bad as they were playing CP and Alex, they cut this to seven with Emmanuel Quickly, Quentin Grimes, yeah. Josh Hart, R.J. Barrett, and Hartenstein. Mm-hmm. Why did R.J. Barrett get pulled from the game? Yeah. Why? 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 That, that, t- that unit was at least flowing and moving the ball and at least having some – some doing trying to at least get out to shooters. Yeah. Why take RJ out and bring Randall back in? Why not let Grimes quickly Hart, RJ, and Hartenstein flow and just live with the result? Because that was the only way we cut this thing to seven. Mm. Brunson didn't have it either. I wouldn't have brought Brunson back in, but I get mm. that part. But okay. um, my issue with this is this, CP. I don't. We don't pass the ball well enough. Mm. Like uh, Grimes. Should, Look, I'm not. Does Grimes deserve some blame in the, for not being aggressive when he caught it in the starting lineup at times? Yes, of course, CP. I hated it when he threw it right back to Randall. But the reality is, CP, when you're playing with guys that don't get you rhythm, and you're getting like one or two shots, like it's hard to play with him. Mm. It's hard, Grimes. I wanted Grimes to be free. I felt relief for the kid because yeah. I understand it's it's frustrating. I'm not. So some of the blame is on Grimes, but some of it is on Brunson and Randall. So. I want Brunson here. I do okay. think I, I'm done with Randall. Appreciate I'm done it. with Randall. We need a star in here that can move the ball, that can get Brunson to play with in the backcourt. I'm done with the slow, mm. the, the slow quick decision. The NBA is about quick decisions, CP. Yeah, it's yeah. about quick decisions yeah. on both ends of the floor. And we're not getting it done right now. I believe in Grimes. I believe in Brunson. But I can't get in shootouts. We've got to get back to defending. Let's Thank go. You. Ron from both. I think Ron was going for the crown. He wants caller of the night. I'm going to nominate him for caller of the night. I'm putting Ron up there. All right, Al. Great show, man. We had a doubleheader today. Soon NBA report and Fan TV. So before we go delirious and crazy, let's wrap it up. And check you on Monday, man. 3 o'clock. NBA report. In-season tournament recap. And more. We'll see you guys there.